Welcome everyone to our session today as we take a look into the market together. We are going to be taking a look at what's happening um, in the market generally. We would start with the economic calendar that you see me open to earlier and then we'll go into the chart and analyze um, the weekly time frames, the monthly, you know, try to see how the market has been moving. We would start as usual from the XY. Before then, let's take a look at what important news we have in the market this week. Um, so I'm going to filter this for the eye impact only so that we don't waste too much time on this. Um, we have a couple of holidays today in the United States and Canada for Labor Day holiday. All right, and um, we have retail sales month over month for Aussie. We have British pound composite PMI and service PMI. I think we also have Euro service PMI today. That is medium impact news, and that's why I am not reflecting it on the screen here because the ones with three bulls that you're seeing means high impact news. Okay, um, on Tuesday, what do we expect? Aussie, we are expecting interest rate decision for Aussie, and we want to see how that, what effect that is going to have on the economy as well. We know Aussie is one of the um, major currencies that are traded in the market, so the interest rate decision usually is expected to have good impact on the market, to have some impact on the market. It's expected to increase from 1.85 to 2.35. That's some 50 basis point increase is expected. And so we'll pay attention to that. Um, we'll also be looking at the RBA rate statement, which is the Reserve Bank of Australia uh, statement of rates, interest rates. We will be looking at construction PMI for British Bank tomorrow. USD will be looking at the ISM Non-Manufacturing Institute of Supply Management. That's the ISM Non-Manufacturing Purchase Managers Index. That's PMI. We'll be looking at that tomorrow. Then for Wednesday, British Pound, sorry, Australian dollar. We'll be looking at the GDP report for quarter over quarter. We'll be looking at um, German GDP report you under Euro. Um, Bailey's Governor Bailey's speech for Br British Pound. Uh, we know it's a good thing to usually listen to the news of, um, sorry, the speech of all of these Bank of England or, or whatever Fed, you know, some members of the board listen to the speech because usually sometimes you're going to feel, hear some sub two. Um, things that would point to where the interest rate decision is going to be, what the economy growth is like, and all of that and all of that. And so some people like to listen to all this to have an idea of what's happening in the economy because it's a good thing to not just trade and not have an understanding of what's moving the economy, what's the general picture of this economy and what is, how is the currency expected to perform, how is the stock market of this um, economy expected to perform and all of that and that would help you trade better okay canadian dollar interest rate decision also on wednesday so we are around interest rate decision area the, the beginning of the month usually we see a lot of this um pmi high pmi for canadian dollar treasury committee hearing for british pound short-term energy outlook for USD, and on thursday Day, we would be seeing the ECB interest rate decision. This is what a lot of people have been waiting for. I've been waiting for based on Euro. We see that already reflected in Euro because for a long while, there hasn't been any much change in the interest rates. Okay. Um, if you look at it for quite a long while, it was just um, 0.0% 0, 0 no increase no nothing it was just there but now it is expected that the last month in um, July it was increased from the 0% to 50 0.5 so, so that's like 50 basis point increase and it is expected that there's going to be another 50 basis point increase this time around um, 
Okay, so it's going to be increased to 1.0. Let's see if that one gets higher than expected. Maybe we can see some move, but it may get priced in before then because a lot of people are already have traded, you know, been trading euro in the positive outlook because of this expectation. So let's see. Initial jobless came for the US. Uh, will also be for Thursday. We would also have ECB press conference, Fed Chair Powell speech for the US, uh, presidential La President Lagarde speech for Euro, crude oil inventory. So we have this week packed with activity in the market that we would see. Let's now go to the chart and um, see what's happening. I intentionally opened the monthly time frame down because I am trying to see where we are. USD has moved to a level that it has not been in the last 20 years. The last time price had been to this level was on second, was in September 20, 2002. And we are in September 2022. What does that mean? We are back to the level that last time we were in was 20 years ago. The question is, are we going to go all the way up to this high point of um, that we got to when? So over 20 years ago, February 20, 20 2002, 2002, maybe we're going to go to that level and that level is 120. So that's what everybody's looking at now. Are we going to get there? But where we are now is this level of September, uh, September 20, 2002, which is 2002. And I feel that we may see some correction from there. Um, before it continues, but dollar is really strong right now and it's not showing so much sign of weakness, although today the market had pushed up before and it looks like it is trying to come back down. Having a close back below this, my um, resistance line that got broken, which is the 109.35 area, would help me expect that there's going to be continue, uh, like a correction, you know, to the downside for dollar but dollar is really strong it may continue bullish and so that's why i'll be careful how i trade it but i'm still expecting that at least in the short term there will be some correction so if there's going to be correction how do i trade the other currencies um i'm going to start with crypto which is bitcoin let's take a look at bitcoin what are we seeing with bitcoin bitcoin it's been bearish, okay? Bitcoin is bearish. I wouldn't buy this because it looks bearish. We'll have this bearish flag, okay? This bearish flag pattern, it's moved to the downside and it's tilting up in correction. And what do we have thereafter? It closed below. And this is now around this horizontal support. Is that place gonna be broken? If that gets broken today, um, where's that horizontal support? Okay, so we have like some horizontal support area here. If that got broken to the downside, I will be looking for a sell. But if it continues up, then I try to change the idea. But from what I am seeing, the bears are still the ones that are stronger in the markets. Um, the direction may change at any time. We may see correction and all of that. But looking at it right now, the bears are still the stronger ones in the market. I look at the daily and I see very tight consolidation on the daily. And that's one of the reasons that for now, I'm going to stay out of the market until I see a change in uh, a close outside of this very tight range. Can you see? tight range on the daily time frame. So a close outside of the range to the bottom would help me do a sell. A close to the upper part may help me find some short-term buy, right? Let's take a look at gold. Gold, I was able to catch some good sell last week. It was a very nice one, you see? I did this on the lower time frame. Let's see. Uh, from the one higher time frame, we were able to catch that. I uh, was able to catch that. This bearish pin bar was the entry candle for me. At the close of that bearish pin bar, I was able to jump in and did a sell. And look at it, it's, it was a beautiful one. It's, 
it went all the way, got to take profit, and now it looks like it's reversing. So now the question is, what is this going to do? Let's see how the week closed last. I have this support area, which has been touched so many times in the past. Okay, so we have, like, if I'm just going to look at it as a horizontal support, you see, this area got touched, touched many times. And then the last one did not exactly touch it before moving up to. And this time around, it also has not touched it, but it moved down a bit. Is it going to come back and touch it? It is possible that it will still come down and touch it. But I think for now, we may see some pullback. It may not be as small as I had this before it comes down. But I am expecting to see a pullback in this. So in the short term i would rather be bullish on this if you look at the daily time frame we also have an engulfing bullish candle there so having a an indication for a buy would help me look for a buy on gold so let's go that's my bias on gold let's look at other ones we have oil what am i looking at with oil my bias on oil what is it it looks bearish for me there is a close below my 50 moving average there is um, an engulfing bearish pattern there uh closing last week so that looks bearish um however on the monthly yes the last three months have also been bearish but i'm also thinking we may see some correction before it continues again so if this week at any time this goes and closes above my 50 moving average i would be looking at the bias changing to bullishness but for now i'm still bearish on this i would especially prefer to see a break outside of this range to help me find a sell or a buy this is in bullish. Uh, we see the structure of the market, higher highs, higher lows. And then what do we have here? If we take this as the last correction, as last low, this moved up. And then right now we are below the last low. So that has been broken. We also have double top here. And the neckline of the double top has been broken with this engulfing bearish candle. We have a little bit of correction and it looks like there's continuation. So a correction a pullback and finding continuation on the lower time frame would also be an, a good one to jump in on there. You have the Canadian dollar, what do we see? On the monthly time frame, we have this uh, huge uh, um, inverted, was it? No, 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 not this one. So that's um, UHZ Yen. That's the one I wanted to talk about. Okay, so this one, there's a break on the weekly to the upside. Last week, it closed a little bit like an indecision candle because there's weak above and below the candle, but it has broken above the resistance that I've set up here. And it closed this time around with the body of the candle. Initially, when it broke above there, it's um, left a long week, but last week I closed above. Now I want to see how that's going to play out. I expect to see pullback and continuation to the top upside, but if it breaks down below that, um, line the horizontal line what do we have that we have 1.31 1 1.3075 okay 1.3075 area then i would expect that um it may move down a little bit more but as long as it remains above that by upper trend line it should be a buy for me um Let's move on to Euro UHZ. Euro UHZ, what are we seeing? Series of lower lows and lower high. The downtrend has not been taken out. This is still a downtrend in market. We may see some pullback, but I do not have so much trust in the Euro um, as a currency because of all that is happening in that zone. So my bias remains very short. This, however, I expect some pullback or maybe in some very short-term frame intraday trade, I may see some short-term buy opportunity, but my bias remains bearish. AUD, USD, this is also still looking all bearish. We have this engulfing bearish candle closing this three weeks ago. Thereafter, we've been having bearish pullback. However, it's around the support, and we see that from this support, we are having a pullback. So I expect to see some pullback before continuation. This, the same with this. Um, now, for this one, it's around the major support area. You see that this, it was the week that got to this point before, and price had 
been somewhere there. We even have a little bit of gap in the market today. Now the question is, is that place going to be broken? The bottom, is it going to be broken or is this going to retrace? We pay attention to this. I expect some retracement, but I also feel it is not impossible for this support to get broken because USD is quite strong compared to all the other currencies at this time. Now, I, uh, saying that, I want to take a look at something as well. I like to look at that on Finvis. Let's take a look at what's happening with US compared to other currencies. Okay, so at this time, it looks like British pound is the only one that is a bit stronger than USD. Every other currency is um, weaker than the US dollar. So US dollar is still doing really strong. But GBP USD looks a bit stronger than all of them. So what, that, what does that mean? We may find in the short term some bullish correction. And then the USD. Same thing, all of them are looking like we are going to have some pullback um, to the bearishness that dollar has caused all of this currency pair because of the strength of dollar. Dollar has been really strong. All right. So we are paying attention to this. I believe that there's likely going to be some pullback. Then after the pullback, we may still see continuation to the downtrend. Okay. Um, you has the CHF. What do we have there? USD CHF, um, USD in this case is the base currency, and that's what we are seeing. There is, um, it gets to the resistance, and we may see some pullback from there. Um, CHF may get a bit stronger this time, maybe we'll see pullback. That's what I'm expecting, um, but let's see how the week had closed last. Okay, the week closed with a big bullish candle, but it has a little bit of week above. So I'm expecting to see correction if there's going to be a continuation to the whole side. I'm expecting correction as well. Let's look at USD yen. Well, USD yen, this one still looks bullish and is the one I wanted to check the whole time where we have um, a big um, inverted head and shoulders on the monthly, all right? So this is still looking bullish, by the way, it's still quite bullish. And I expect that even if we're gonna see correction now, it will likely get to the 145, 146 area, okay? Um, that's 144.51, that's what I'm seeing on that last resistance. So between 144.5 to 147.5, is where I'm expecting that that's going to go to before we see some clear correction, if there's going to be any. Okay, let's move on. So let's go to Europe now. What do we see? Last week, okay, that's monthly. Let's go to the weekly and see how the month has closed. We have a close, um, how the week had closed. We had a close below this support area at some point with this engulfing bearish candle. Since then, there's, there's been more like correction and it's looking a little bit like bearish flag because that um, ranging kind of channel is tilting to the upside. In that case, I would expect to see some bearish close again to this side. Let's see, what do we have? Um, last week, candle closed like a bearish pin bar for Euro Canadian dollar, and that means bearishness for me. If I'm going to look for a trade, it should be bearish. Yes, the trend look extended, but there is no indication for me that this is likely, uh, this is ready to continue to move all the way up. You see that this try to move up, but the bias got rejected so we help here and then the body got close there leaving a long week above that shows that price had been up here but couldn't close there and price finally go come down and close over here euro yen well this looks quite bullish compared to the other ones so if i'm going to trade euro perhaps i would rather do euro against yen if i am going to do a buy but um, at the same time I, i'm thinking this is forming like head and shoulder last week at close so bullish candle engulfing the ones before but it also left a week above which will signal that we may still see some move to the downside on this one let's look at euro hand 
influenza, the sun has been bearish, last it closed like a bearish pin bar. I am bearish on this. I would rather look to sell than buy. Um, Euro CHF also looks a bit bearish, last it at close with a bullish candle, but if that bullish candle also has some weak support, but let's see how this plays out this week. Um, Euro yen, Euro yen, um, I see like an engulfing bullish candle at some point, but it's around the resistance area, and I think this is likely going to come down a bit, maybe in retracement before we see continuation of. It also looks like we have this inverted head and shoulder on the weekly. So if this um, resistance got broken, I expect that for some time it may be it may remain bullish. But let's see how the interest rate decision for Euro play out this week. Maybe that is going to help us have a clearer direction or indication of where the direction is going to go. Cut the end. What's happening? Bullish. This remains bullish. Last week candle kind of at close bullish, um, but it's got around the resistance, and we may see some correction before we see continuation. British pound yen, what do we have? We have um, a cap this morning too that broke below this, my symmetrical triangle. Okay, so we want to see where that continues. Um, TBP AUD, what am I seeing? This still looks bearish for me. It's so this engulfing bearish candle. Look at the bearish pin bars. So that looks bearish. This also remains bearish. Uh, however, we know that for this British pound pairs, many of them go to around a solid resistance support. So while they look bearish, we may see some pullback before we can see some bearishness. And the pullback may also be some big ones because we have seen them on the higher time frame, which in this case is the weekly. GBP card looking the same way. Last week at close bearish, the last three, four weeks are all bearish moves. And that may indicate that the bears are stronger in the market, the sellers are stronger or more than the buyers. And in that case, even if the buyers try to push the price up for some time, the sellers will likely continue to push the price down. Let's look lastly for today, the book at GBP NZD. Um, lastly. What do we have there? A clear bearish candle. We initially had this bearish engulfing. We have this correction. And then we see another bearish candle closing last week. What do we think? I think we still pull back and continuation as well. That's what I'm seeing with all of this. All right. So this is how I come to the end of my weekly market analysis in um, the forex market if you have any question you have any instruments you would like me to check subsequently please do well to ask and also remember that the forex varsity is um, the academy the training program that you want to take up all right so join us in ms africa academy with a forex varsity program where we hold you by the hand work with you every step of the way we consistently improve on our courses people who have taken in the past are also having opportunity to see all our revised courses that we are putting up on the training um platform so please if you are looking for the best place to learn to do trading right you want where you'll be held by your hand and you will work with you every step of the way to help you learn to do trading the right way the ms africa academy is the way place you want to be so please look at the links look at the um, phone number whatsapp number all below the video on the detailed path to interact with us, send the charts, ask questions, let's get you started. I've also just recently put up some free training on my site, so you may start learning from there, uh, free professional beginner course, all right? So having any question on this, reach out and I would answer all your questions. Please do have a beautiful day ahead of you.